Hello everyone, it's Lou Collins. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me. So we are looking today at the Distress Oxide Bundled Sage, a beautiful muted green, almost a pastel colour, um, a lovely soft green, it's kind of a hint of grey in it. It's a fabulous colour if you want to work with pastels, but I am going to bring in some darker and brighter colours into our second colour combination. Now, if you're just joining me on this series, um, looking at Distress Oxide colours, I'm working through each of the colours alphabetically. We're, like I said, we're on to bundled sage, so we're getting towards the end of the bees now. You can go and check back all the previous colours we've done so far. And for each video, I show you the colour first of all. Then we go through a two and a three colour combination that you can take away and use on your project. It may just inspire you to use the colours you've got and start experimenting with different colour blends because sometimes it can be a bit scary. But I do think, I honestly believe with Distress Oxides, there's very, very few colours that you can actually not blend together, if any. So um, hopefully this will just get you thinking outside the box and build your confidence in blending these oxides and inks as well. We do sometimes work with Distress Inks instead of the oxides. So let's look at bundled sage first of all. Now I'm going to put this into the center. The reason being is I'm going to do a three color blend in a moment with this and I want this to be the middle color. So look at that, a beautiful, beautiful soft green, absolutely gorgeous, very similar to um, some of the paint colors I've actually got around my home. It's a very calm, muted color. Isn't that just stunning love that that so i'm going to team this for our first combination with a scattered straw so let's just dry the mat off excuse the um the light reflecting off the mat today it's a bit bright so scattered straw is another pastel type color very muted color and i'm going into the end of this here because it's kind of a lighter color i didn't want to slap the yellow into the middle of our color blends and I'm just working in circles into that white cardstock, making sure that there's no white left and then into the bottom of the green. And look at that blend. Isn't that just so pretty? You can, if you wish, have that as a two color blend on a project. Very much kind of cornfields. Well, it's called scattered straw, so you'd expect it to be sort of straw like. Um, and then in the other end, I'm going to mix saltwater taffy, which is a pink, lovely pink not too bright, almost a coral colour to it, almost an orangey tone. And the reason I wanted to add the pink to the green to show you rather than do it the other end at the yellow is because I want to show you and really prove to you that Distress Oxides, they don't go too muddy in the way that uh, other ink colours and watercolours would if you mix the colours. So green and pink together are beautiful, but you kind of think, well, this is almost a red and green and red make brown. Am I going to get a muddy mix? So I just want to show you what these look like when you do put them together, because actually um, green and pink, particularly these two colors together as a two color blend is stunning. I actually used it very recently on a magazine commission with my Magnolia Drive collection. So I know that these two work so well together. So just bringing that pink down into the green and then so that we, because we've sort of lost some of the green there, I'm going to come back, pick up a little more green, go back into the middle there and start bringing that green up a little into the pink. And that just softens the pink. So if you're actually looking for a softer pink, you could also uh, just use this over the top very gently, mix the two completely. But how beautiful is that? So pretty again. And there's your two color. And that is probably one of my favorite two colors so far. Saltwater taffy and bundled sage. So there's your three color blend. And let's move on and do a two color blend. Now between each blend I do, I'm just wiping my mat and then wiping the moisture off as well. So I'm going to be using bundled sage and I'm going to be going with these colors. So we've got frayed burlap, gathered twigs, peacock feathers and bundled sage. So very different, um, quite a, quite a almost dark blend here. Let's go, see I think frayed burlap and bundled sage are, no they'll be okay. I was gonna say they're too, too similar, but we'll work with it. So let's see, frayed burlap first of all. So this is again, this is quite a soft brown. It's nice and dark, but it's quite a soft brown. So just popping that in the end there. Then I'm going to go in with the green the bundled sage. So 
so pick up a good amount of that. I'm going to go on to the area of my cardstock that I want to be solid colour, first of all, just meeting up to that join line. See, I'm not actually touching the brown yet because I don't want the brown to go into the green just yet. I want to lay down lots of green and get that solid colour in, that concentrated colour. And now I'm going to start going into that brown. Now, I didn't want the brown to be too prominent and it, because it's quite a strong colour against the bundled sage, I knew that would really start to seep into the green quite a lot. So you see that I've just gone down into the brown. It's toned the brown down. I might just come back in with a little of the brown there to darken that. There we go. What a lovely blend that is, isn't it? So nice soft colours. Then I'm going to go into peacock, peacock feathers. So again, give this a wipe just so that I don't contaminate my blends here. So this is a strong colour. Look at that, really strong colour. So I'm going to bring it out to almost the end. And I'm not going to blend this with this brush. I'm going to blend this with my bundled sage because again, it's such a strong colour. I'm going to overpower the bundled sage we've put on if I go into that any further. So just working my way along that line, not bringing it down into the green, more pushing it up into the peacock feathers there. Again, beautiful, beautiful blend. And lastly, we're going to go gathered twigs, which is a darker brown, into the peacock feathers at this end. And I would say my advice, I suppose it is my advice, it's my, my preference when I'm doing a blend like this. If it's going to be a background, I like to choose the, the darker colours for the bottom of the colour blends pattern. So if you're doing horizontal lines, I would have these darker peacock feathers and the gathered twigs would be towards the bottom of the card. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. So just again, blending that along that line trying not to lose any of that lovely strong colour there. Isn't that just wonderful? So we've got two completely different colour blends, both using bundled sage. And maybe you can see there actually how different that green looks when it's placed against different colours. You've got a bit of a thumbprint there. That's just from, uh, where is it? There we go. So that's just from me holding this. I tend to, if I'm doing a card, I do tend to use, um, a larger piece of cardstock than I'm going to use for my cards and then I do my blending and then I cut it out to avoid any finger marks like such. But there we go, two completely different colour blends using bundled sage. Definitely one you'll want to have in your stash. If you like this, things like the clear blending mats, the blending brushes as well, everything I'm using is all available uh, linked down below. You can also see there my Distress Ink and Oxide colour charts and labels that are all free for you to download over on my website. So uh, take a look at those, go and have a browse, and hopefully I'll see you back here soon for another Distress Oxide colour combination video.